We have a great, great interview today. So happy to have him. Finally, finally, we've been we've been trying to do this a while. We have the great Tom Whalen. You'll probably know him best for his Power Rangers artwork on the Power Ranger Lightning Collection by Hasbro. How are you, sir? How are you doing today? Good. Thanks. Finally, to uh, glad to finally be here. We know we had talked about this for a while. I know. But, um, I'm pretty psyched because I'm uh, not only am I, you know, working on the artwork for toys, but I'm a huge toy fan myself. So I, I, I listen to all your feeds and and watch all your your social media. So happy thank to be you. here. Well, thank you. Know, thank you. I'm I'm sorry we haven't gotten to to do this sooner. I think we've had every sort of uh, catastrophe thrown at us uh, since <laughs> this year started. So at least we're both alive and talking right now. So that's right. Good. Let's, Let's get it posted quickly before, before anything happens. Yeah, right. This is going to go right up, right after. Yep, uh, yep. For those that don't know, uh, who are you? Why are you here? What, what are you doing? Okay. What are you... <laughs> well, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm on your show because I do the uh, box art for Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Yes, you do. And uh, that has been a super fun project, and I, I look forward to every, every wave I get to work on. Uh, I, I guess I probably – I might be known – to some listeners uh, from my poster work, which is where I pretty much that, that field I've worked in for the last 10 or 11 years uh, through mo- primarily through Mondo mm-hmm. uh, uh, limited edition poster work, uh, silkscreen posters for movies and TV shows and animation. Your, your artwork has a really retro flair to it, but also something that's very bright and cheerful at the same time where it's, it's appealing to, I think, a lot of different tastes, especially mine. You know, I, I love your uh, sound wave uh, that you did. It's very just angular and it's got lots of vibrant colors. He's just he's so like distorted, but it works, you know, very 80s, very tape deck. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it, it, people when people ask me how to describe my style, I think the, the thing that keeps coming up is retro and modern at the same time. Like mm-hmm. modern, I did a show with a, a friend of mine named Dave Brillo, another artist, and we called it modern vintage because it really is like a throwback with modern sensibilities. So it's it's worked out well for me. Now I would say I'm, I'm sure you're well versed in most of these projects that you that you work on. You can tell through your art that you're at least a a fan or you know what you're doing, and that's 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 what I like to see. You can see little nuances, little things where you're like, oh. They must have watched what this is based off in order right, to kind of get right. that little uh, little joke or you know little little throw in kind of thing. Yeah, I love uh, finding that stuff in in products and, and artwork that I buy. So I I try to incorporate it when I can. Yeah. In terms of let's say we'll start with like Power Ranger. How did how did that start? Have you always been you know you said you're a toy collector. What did, what's some of um, the earliest toys or what did you start with? What's what's your What's your go-to? Well, I started with, like so many people, the uh, Kenner Star Wars was like one of the first things I can remember, just mm-hmm. being enamored when Star Wars came out. And everybody, that was, you know, whenever a like, birthday or holiday came up, that was uh, was a, a pack of, of vintage figures, which at, at the time they weren't vintage, but they are now. Right, everything's um, vintage now when you're like, wait, wait. Where's right, the right. <laughs> <laughs> and why didn't you save it from back then? Yeah, uh, I do. I do have my <laughs> my vintage Kenner, uh, the the majority of the action figures. But GI Joe was huge for me um, mm. back in the day, and Transformers, GI Joe, Transformers, Star Wars, um, a little bit of He He Man, but um, pretty much those three were my were my three pillars of of toy collecting when I was a kid. What What do you think now with you know, it's like we'll say G.I. Joe, especially Transformers have still been around for a while. But with everything kind of coming back, are you are you finding that, you, you know, you're more of a fan of it again now? Or is it kind of like, oh, that's, you know, are you collecting them? Are you going more for I the am. old stuff? Yeah. Oh, I'm 100 percent on on board with the new stuff. I like a lot of what's going on with Transformers, mm-hmm. um, but I don't collect it. Like it's one I, I'm on limited space and we are yeah. building a new house with a a little bit bigger studio, so I'm, I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to stay as disciplined in the next year. But <laughs> Transformers is one thing I've not let myself slide into. Um, yeah, that's a slippery slope. Right yeah, because that that can go so many ways so quickly. Uh, yeah. Star Wars, I'm I'm pretty much I pick and choose. Like I I used to be a, a figure arts snob, 
Like I would mm-hmm. only buy like, but Kenner, or I mean, um, Hasbro has come so far with black series that I'm, I'm pretty much all in on black series right now. Yeah. And same with GI Joe. I, I, that from, from snake eyes reveal on, I'm, I'm so excited about that line. Um, just to see them in, in six inch form. And I can't wait for, you know, snake eyes is the only one I have right now, but, uh, I can't wait for, for those, the next wave to start shipping to me yeah the the for me i was i was i had some gi joe I was never the, the gi joe collector collector guy you know but it's so fun to see these characters now for me uh in the six inch like i'm all about the uh, some of the wave too i don't know if they've been officially revealed but there's some certain characters like distro he's been shown off we could talk about it. <laughs> yes yeah yeah he sure. looks awesome um and oddly enough for me like i see the potential of putting it with some transformers figures you know a lot of the crossovers and yep and things yep. like that but um i've heard nothing but the best like especially you know from you and and talking about the resurgence of gi joe i think it's been a long time coming a lot of people for years and years have wanted this and just to see it kind of come to fruition now it's it's fantastic I it's agree. like a golden I, age of toys <laughs> I, I i say that to my friend who's the same age as me and we 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 hurriedly send texts back and forth as soon as something's revealed and we're like it, the, our first response back is it, this is the golden age of toys yeah. like i it is really like anything that like it's the highest quality and the most varied output of of brands and and quality right now yeah it, it, it's it's funny it's, how long it's taken to get to this point but I mean, for those of us that remember, I mean, even like Star Wars back in the day, like they were good. They were good enough for what you were getting and sure. to have those memories. But what like face printing and oh, just the man. articulation yeah. and yeah, you know, it's and even like I can. There's like a clear jump in the last two or three years, especially like I said with with Black Series and and Marvel Legends and mm-hmm. uh, Lightning Collection. It just Hasbro has really just by themselves stepped up the game. Yeah. The, the legends have become a, like a separate thing entirely. It's like you can tell by the way they package things, the character selections. Yeah, they might do like you know, a ton of Spider-Mans and Iron Mans and Caps. But what they're doing increases like the fun of it all because, I mean, you have Deadpool kicking ahead of Madcap, you know, in one of the packages. Or you have him in his boxers. Like he looks like he's reclined. Like they, I think they have the most fun – it looks like with the Deadpool line because they can get yeah. so yep. crazy, wacky. so wacky. Yeah, yeah. But it's the uh, that's what makes it fun to me because it's almost reminiscent of like old Toy Biz days of just super weird characters or armor or, or things that they would put in the packaging. But it's like the modern way of kind of doing it with Legends, like let's say Pirate Pool. You know what I mean? It's like yep, it's, yep. Yeah, I know, and I don't, I don't even know those. Like I, I read a decent amount of comics, but I'm, I don't know Deadpool and and that his his universe very well but uh, yeah that's like just to see the knowing i'm never i don't collect marvel legends i only have a handful um a ton of people and, just clicked off this interview no I'm just kidding. yeah <laughs> i love them i think they're doing an a plus job i just that's another like space issue if i start down that road it's just gonna be too much but yeah. um there ha- it does seem like they're having so much fun and i love seeing i love even if i'm not buying a line just to see new reveals and and packaging and it's, it's so much fun on that level without even having to buy them. Yeah, exactly. And it's so, there's so many of them that I always say, you know, everyone's like, oh, I can't collect them all. I'm like, yeah, that's, it's gotten to that point where you don't really have to collect them all anymore. Yeah. And for crazy people like me, like I go, well, I have to, but you know what I mean? It's like, you can pick and choose and later down the road, you'll probably get the, the figure again. You have a second chance, you know, something like yeah. that. So it's, it's changed the landscape of, of collecting totally. to a certain degree, but uh, totally, you know, <laughs> in talking about like the uh, the pirate pool and like the weird wonky zaniness, like it just, and then the X Men, you know, it's it's all come full circle again from X Men animated up to um, you know Spider Man animated. We got the new retro series and everything else, so it's it's a lot. But God dang, they are just, they're, everybody's it's nailing so it. Much There's fun. no bad company. There's no bad, you know, somebody that's dropping the ball or anything else. It's just like. Yeah, the industry is operating at a super, super high. Like, I, I think competition breeds quality. So I think everybody's kind of real, looking over their shoulder and realizing, oh, 
let's incorporate this into ours or let's pioneer these hidden hidden pin joints or let's you know that it's it's everybody's doing super work right now yeah i'll tell you what though in talking about your work and and this is why i think what you're doing on Power Rangers and what they're doing with the new, you know, Hasbro line, this is what kind of separates it is, yes, it's great to get, you know, the figures and they're doing a fantastic job, but the old fashionedness of putting like hand-drawn art or just your, you know, yourself in this artwork on a box, that really makes it pop on store shelves. It immediately grabs my attention. A lot of time, a lot of times like these days, it's all very digital artwork and, when you see that hand-drawn art still there on certain packages, that's what – it just sells me on it so much more because it's – it feels created. It feels like, you know, people – somebody did this with their hands, so. I feel uh, the same way. Even when I'm shopping, I look, and you can, tell, you can tell, like, certain brands jump out to me as more just appealing as a package, appealing as a, a unit on the yeah. shelves. And if you're not if, – if you're in there shopping and you're not – maybe not a toy collector or you're shopping for – a kid in your family, it feels like those lines, and granted, it's the popular lines like Star Wars and and uh, and Power Rangers are putting that effort for it, for mm-hmm. it. but uh, it feels like those, that the whole package appeals to people that may not care about the characters as much. Yeah. No, it, and there's nothing better. You give it to somebody as a gift, like you said, and it's it's just that much more of a cohesive product just to visually see. Yeah, and, um, exactly. Well, you know, I'm, I was telling you earlier, you know, I've, I actually found the Blue Ranger I have it on my, my desk right now. I'm looking at it like your artwork just in the size. It, you know, a lot of people keep the boxes, too. They, you know, I get photos all the time of the shelves and they have all your artwork displayed and it looks good. It makes me sometimes want to keep the boxes. <laughs> I know. I know. I, 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 feel, I and I give credit to um, uh, Rob Dubay, who's he was he was on the boys team at Hasbro. And he contacted me. We had done a little bit of work on, um, he had me do some style guide work for Transformers. I think it was Siege at the time they were working on. So he had me do some like, uh, just work that would feature in the style guide. It was never published, but it was kind of to give the vibe of what they were doing with that line. And that's how we met. Um, he had He had collected, I believe he was like a poster collector. And that's how I get so much of my clients right now is, if they they know me from the poster world and they have artwork or they they go to like somebody else in the office that they're working in and they have my posters hanging up it's they're almost like 24 by 36 inch business cards that are hanging on the walls <laughs> everywhere <clears throat> so much of of what i've been able to do has been uh, through the poster community but um he was either a collector or had seen some work and he, he hired me to do this transformers work and then when that project ended uh, it was like summer of 2018. He contacted me for the Power Rangers work, and uh, he was the one that came up with the box design and the way the the sides feature like a nice crop of the character. And I, I got to say too, when I see people sending me pictures of like all the figures posted in front of the boxes, it makes my it makes my heart happy because I know the packaging means something to them, mm-hmm. and yeah. it 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 makes me happy. And it, it's like that you don't have to display the figure in front of the full package. You can you can save space and turn it to the side and almost like a bookshelf. I, I it's the the design that he did is is brilliant and it's 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 really showcased what I can do too. Yeah, when when you have them all like just together, you have the like Lord Zed, especially Goldar and things. It, it's it's almost like a, a print of yours. You know what I mean? It's just in a, yeah. you know in an odd end way, but absolutely. Um, it, it does. It goes well with the figures. And yeah, I've seen a lot of those where, you know, you pull the figure out, they put it right in front on the shelf and it's like little, it's like a bookend kind of thing. And it, it really makes it pop. And you have that artwork uh, around them. And it gives, like you said, a very retro new age feel, modern vintage look. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's, yep. uh, it, it's just the color, the colors is what really does it. And it also helps me to kind of decipher which power ranger I'm trying to pick <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's Mighty Morphin. All right, I'll buy that one. Right. So, you know, no idea. <laughs> right, right. I think I had mentioned this to you before. I am learning on the fly. Uh, I'm trying learning different. I don't know what the, if they're called seasons or teams. I, I guess is probably the best way to 
differentiate them, but I, I, I knew very little. I was like out of the toy realm when Power Rangers hit and uh, I'm, I'm getting caught up and the fans have been great. They are not unafraid to reach out and say, hey, we would love this detail on here. You missed this on the neck. Um, so I, it's it's been a learning experience, but a fun one. So I, I'm trying to trying to get it. It's a lot. I mean, it's you figure what 90. I'm, I'm going to if I take a guess at the year, I'll get it wrong. But early 90s all the way through now. And it's basically never stopped. So yeah. there are just team after team after team with variations. So there's a lot, a lot of material. Do you find it? It's is it hard like with everything that you draw, are the Power Rangers difficult to kind of design, to draw, to re, you know, recreate in, in the style that you put forth on the box? Uh, no, they're not. Uh, especially the helmeted characters. I kind of have, like, I have a, I love, rep, like, um, repetition and quantity and, like, taking a theme and carrying it out through through a series. I've always loved that. And I'm, I'm very strict on myself about like, I've made rules up about how I illustrate them about like the, the line weights have to be the same. And I try to use the same general, like the way I break the visors where there's like, it's solid black in one area and medium black. And then a little highlight of light gray. I, I keep my own, I have my own rules that I'm, I'm pretty much the only one. Maybe, maybe I'm the only one that notices it, but, um, like now that I've done this for how many illustrations, I kind of have have a have a routine. It's when it's when you get to a character that's like a, a human head, like Rita, that mm-hmm. kind of takes me longer. At you know, because I have to I have to kind of come up with new rules for myself for those mm-hmm. characters. But the actual helmeted characters, I I kind of not that it's quicker to illustrate, but I like I don't have to make the, the same decisions every time. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah it's interesting when you say that because like even looking at the artwork on the box right now I see those subtle gradations of gray you have some gray in the helmet but they're not you know it's it's different it breaks it up really well and it gives it a nice highlight nice stylistic approach to these characters and that combined with the box themselves real I like the shapes of the box I know a lot of people probably at home are like why are they talking about packaging talk about toys you know what I mean but <laughs> this this to me it, you know I am I'm a packaging enthusiast snob you know what i mean i love when you give me like the full complete look of the figure and then it makes me go like this sometimes like i don't want to take that out like i wanted to kind of display it and it pains me to take the figure out of the package oh, i know but. i i've <laughs> i i'm mostly i'm like a 99 percent take everything out the only yeah. thing like the um star wars like celebration exclusives i've left on because those cards look so cool and the yeah. the, the Kenner looking Boba Fett I've left on, but just about everything else I take out of the package. But now in like paring down my stuff to get ready to move, I've, I've had to like throw a lot of boxes away and it. I know it's stupid. It sounds so dumb, but it's, it's, it kind of like pains me to get rid of some of these boxes. Yeah. Once they're gone, I don't really think about them, but like actually letting go of them is, is tough. Yeah. <laughs> We're all hoarders in some way. Yeah, right? I know. Basically yeah, that, that's hoarding. <laughs> that's not toy collecting. <laughs> I watch that show every once in a while and I'm like thinking like, am I like, am I on the way to this? Is this Yeah, like, it gets real. I... It gets real when you, when you start like <laughs> applying that to yourself. It's, yeah. Especially when the family goes like, you know, like just, you can throw them away. Right. I'm like, no, I have plans with them. Like I have plans. You know what I mean? Then you start yes, going like, I know. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> I'm going to have 18 cats and seven coffee pots because they're all dirty yeah. and I don't want to clean them. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call it a museum. Some people call it hoarding. <laughs> In terms of like in what you started out to accomplish, you, you know, very accomplished artist. Did you ever was was packaging design, getting into action figure packaging design? Was that something that you always wanted to do, or did you kind of just fall into it eventually? Uh, package design really appealed to me when I was in college. Uh, I, I went to a small state school in Pennsylvania called Kutztown, mm. and. Um, they have a great design program and one of the courses I took was package design and that, that always appealed to me. Um, I, I, I love that course and it was one of my goals coming out of school. Um, but never, I don't know if toy packaging ever, like it's, it, it's almost too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I, I love to collect and uh, love to work on all coming together. Um, I, I never, I never saw it all converging like that. 
that's that's like that, that's cool to think about you know like i even think about it too sometimes where you know i've collected these things for years and then just to kind of start toy shows and now i'm going to toy fair it's it's kind of mind-blowing so i'm just yeah. I'm sitting in the hotel room going like how did i started instagram talking about my collection and now this is wild you know what i mean yeah so, i know when you take a breath sometimes you step back and you're like how did this happen like this is yeah. great i don't want to question it too hard because i might wake up but um how did this happen i know yeah and i'm you know very appreciative and just everyone that actually likes and, and still continues to follow you know toy news that's always great uh, i think you turn oh sorry go ahead and i was just gonna say i think you've created a unique uh corner for yourself too it's it's a different type of toy feed it's especially how you share the where the finds everywhere are i think that i think i enjoy just scrolling through your stories just you know hammering through them quickly just to see what's what's showing up where so i think well, that's thank you credit to you thank you you know it, it you know i guess a lot of times and I, and i say this a lot it's it's more for people that uh, maybe they don't have the time to go on message boards and everything else and when i was a kid uh, you know, I used to go on like Action Figure Insider all the time and that or, yeah. or look up Toy Fair magazine. And yeah, that's sure. how you would that's how you'd find out about toys uh, back in the day. But it has become such a burst of, of news and just fandom and everybody just kind of working together, coming together and being like, hey, I found this, uh, you know, Walmart, this today. And, and, and it, I love when somebody finds something, they send it. I post about it, and then like maybe a couple hours later, sometimes even minutes later, man, I was driving by Target and I stopped, and holy, you know, they had it. I can't believe, you know what I mean? And that's to me where I'm like, cool. Like, you mean at the same store? <laughs> They'll like pop in that same store? Yeah, that. That's or funny. They happen to just be by, you know, their their own targets. Um, it, it's it, the the speed and the rate of which news and like finding things in stores is just insane nowadays, you know, especially with, yeah. uh, brick seek and pop finder. It's like, if I tell people all the time, they're like, how do I find this stuff? I'm like, well, I used to call target and bug the heck out of the employees, <laughs> you know, they'd be like, what are you looking for? I'm like, it's like a Spider-Man. He's got like a, oh, right. You can get somebody piece. yeah, who just <laughs> like uh, my dad worked at target for a short time, uh, in the last maybe six, seven years. And like, he used to do stocking and I can imagine if, if, um, like somebody would have called him with toy questions, he would have been <laughs> yeah. diligent about it. But like, I can, I can only imagine the, like the disdain for, for like trying to find these toys. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's so awkward, especially now, you know what I mean? You feel bad. You're like, Hey, do you have the new Marvel Legends, I know. blah, blah, blah. I know. And they're like, looking at you. I'm like, this is how nerdy it gets. I'm sorry. In advance. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But usually, you know, people are, are usually pretty nice. It's just, you can't, a lot of people, they get upset. All oh, the employees did, you know, but I'm like, you can't expect these people to know anything no, about this. No, no, Nobody no. And knows. No, it's a bonus <laughs> if they do, but you can't, and don't, and don't get, you know, don't cop an attitude if they don't know or yeah. care as much about it as, as we do. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, and I've had a lot, I always tell people, I've had a lot more luck when you're nice the people would tend to go a little bit more out of their way. You know what I mean? Don't go up to them Absolutely. and be like, I, I know it's here. I, you know what I mean? It's like, absolutely. Yeah, but they, they don't know that. They, <laughs> no. Nor do they they're care. Already, yeah, they're already judging. They're looking at you going like, why are you playing right. with toys, dude? Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, what is some of the things that, um, you know, plans-wise in the future, what's a line that you would love to work on or do artwork for? Is there anything? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, you do you do the Power Rangers, awesome. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like I said, it Thank gives you. it gives life um, to to the, the, the ultimately going to the store, buying them, seeing them on the shelf. When you see all those white boxes all stacked up with one another, and you're the fact that your artwork makes it oh so easy on the right hand side just to kind of flip through them. You're like red, blue, yellow. Yeah, there right, right, right. It, yeah, <laughs> there's no numbering. There's no. Uh, um, you know, you, you just, you just visually identify. Yeah. I think for, for black series, uh, I really liked where they went with the red and black, um, boxes. It, the numbers helped to a certain degree, but as, I mean, what they're up to 105 or six or something like yeah. that. I know they're going to yeah. be, they're, they're going in a new direction with the packaging, which is, 
which is great because it's it's I think it's time to kind of change it up. It's getting a little bit uh, not necessarily a bad thing. It's not it's like I wouldn't say stale, but it's getting to the point where you need that refresh because ultimately it's all starting to kind of become muddled and look the same, especially yeah, when you look at the numbers, I'm like, who is one Oh five. Yeah. You have to look exactly. at the tiny name. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, uh, I, I love the black, the red and black look. Um, and I love the, the Gregory Titus's artwork on those. Yeah. Um, he did. That said, he, he did, did a it, fantastic it, job. And I, I, I kind of, I love the way his consistency. I think that's something that I strive for too, is just, you know, it's always the line weights, always the same. Everything looks, has a very unique feel to it. Even the last few, um, that they did where they introduced color um, was yeah. really way it didn't, it didn't um, step over the, the look he had going. It kind of incorporated nicely. Um, so I, I think he did a, a bang up job throughout that series. And, and I think that said, um, I think that the new, the new packaging is super exciting too. The, yeah, the connect, exactly. the c- connective uh, tissue between the, the different properties I think is, is a really great idea. When they did, they did the um, like the bursts of color. Let's say for like the Walgreens Obi Wan, they had the blue box, or they had the uh, Walmart Yoda. I think he was in green. You know, every every once in a while, when they would incorporate Titus's artwork to color, it was like a special event kind of thing. Where yeah, like, yeah. Ooh, that's uh, and it, it's it works in that sense of like, oh, it's a package change up. You know what I mean? It's it's exciting. It it grabs your attention. Um, but I like I like the color coding for the new um. Star Wars. It's again talking about saving the boxes. Like I'm like, God dang. Like oh, I know. I I do I save in this <laughs> when they dropped all those like a week or whatever two weeks ago. Um, mm. I bought uh, Akbar and Tebow and Zeb, and I was thinking, man, those boxes are so good. <laughs> like I really don't have room to display them, but I, I'm gonna have a hard time getting rid of them. So I may fold them down and and I my I'm curious art wise. Uh, like if there are 30 figures by the if the you know three years from now there's 30 figures from Jedi are they mm-hmm. all going to continue that same um you know yeah, mural I was, feel I was are they just going to keep that, connecting yeah. or are they going to like after 10 of each one are they just going to reset because that is going to collectors it's going to drive collectors mad yeah because you got to figure there's <laughs> the rebels one is probably done or I don't know I'm just guessing but the mm-hmm. the core of that team is done but um you know, New Hope, you would assume, and Empire would have much longer runs. So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be driving some shelf uh, installation everywhere. <laughs> some, some odd, oddly configured shelf spacing. Yeah. In, in about 50 years when, uh, you know, you know, estate sales happen and stuff like that, like how many boxes, <laughs> how many I know. boxes does this guy collect? Jesus. <laughs> I, I joked with a friend of mine about like, he's as into toy collecting as I am. And, uh, we joked about like my kids dragging all this to the curb one day <laughs> and like having zero interest in any of it. All this, this collection that I've cultivated over the, you know, an entire lifetime basically. Yeah. will will be dragged to the curb or I don't know. I, I don't have to worry about that. But. See, I've, I've thought about it. Like, like what happens to it all, you know, at the end and, and I'm like, do I do like, like an estate sale where everything's a dollar? Do I just blow it? Like even like the hardest, most like <laughs> rarest stuff ever. Like, do I just make it a dollar like that? You know, yeah. I'm not going to care. I'm not going to be around. Just okay. get it in someone else's <laughs> hands. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or do I like get buried with it? You know what I mean? Like, do you right, know, it's right. like a mausoleum where I'm just <laughs> like, enveloped in stuff. I mean, or pick the possibilities. one, pick the one that you need to be buried with. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. This one, this went dark. Yeah. This is, this is getting people at home are going like, what are they talking about? Right. Like, <laughs> went off the rail i think uh, uh if if you don't follow him on youtube is uh, toy poloy he brought the I, he watched the, or he did a video i watched it the other day about this very subject and it was interesting because it got me thinking I'm like god dang yeah like i'd hate to leave this for somebody this is gonna suck They're yeah gonna i know what is this i know and as i'm like like i mentioned i'm packing i'm gonna start packing the toys up in the next couple weeks um I, I wish you the best like, of luck with all yeah, of that. Yeah, I know. Because and that I, is the worst thing ever. <laughs> I, I have a lot of those, um, well, maybe like five or six of those Gentle Giant uh, Clone Wars animated statues. Oh, yeah. I, I was worried about those until I found the boxes. I, I luckily kept all the, the foam in, like, the you know, 
styrofoam insets for those. So that'll be okay. It's That's just good, yeah. all the six inch stuff is going to, my wife said, what are you going to, yeah, you have a lot of toys. What are you going to do? I said, well, I'm just going to kind of put them, I think each one in a Ziploc bag. So that yeah. everything stays together and kind of put them in coffin pose and just <laughs> kind of keep, keep stacking them with cloth between them. So yeah, no, I, will, I will document that as I'm doing it. There you go. It's always funny to me where some people will write in. They'll be like, what's the best way to store your figures? I'm like, if, if you can, don't. And if you have to, Ziploc bags in a tight, sealable, yeah. was it Rubbermaid or, or the yeah, ones you yeah. get from Costco or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an instance where, uh, you know, you put something away and you come find it and it was all um, – Silverfish. They had cloth on it. It was all silverfish eaten up, and I was bummed. I was oh like, no! Oh. I didn't put it in a bag, so it, it does help. It keeps, oh, you mean uh, they go after the cloth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and and that was a learning experience. I was like, what? These little things eat this stuff? Come on! <laughs> I wouldn't have known that. So that's good to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it's it it's some. I mean, I learned the hard way, but at the same time, like silverfish traps are a thing. So <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, There's one more thing to worry about. Right? Yeah, that's 2020. 2020 for you. Yeah, exactly. Except these silverfish are the size of, like, you know, baseballs, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Talking about 2020, you know, and, and, and lots of toys coming back, like Power Rangers, for instance. Like, I was very surprised um, finding on store shelves, like, the recent wave of Power Rangers, which includes, like, the Blue Ranger, I think the Black Zeo Rangers in there as well. Um have you been have you been seeing some delays and like where you usually grab your toys? Have you been getting everything kind of sort of? Have you been kind of more staying indoors? Like how has this whole thing affected you? Collecting yeah, I've been we've been staying we've been playing it pretty close to the vest as a family and yeah. um, just because there's I there's so many conflicting reports and I, my, my we I work from home my studio's at home mm-hmm. my wife works from home and my son has been homeschooled for two years now anyway. So um, this wasn't the most seismic shift for us. So yeah. we, and my daughter, um, she went to online learning uh, in March. So we have been kind of operating pretty close to the vest. So I've been ordering stuff. I haven't been to a Target since March. Um, oh, wow, yeah. We pretty much just hit a grocery store every like 10 days now. We have it down to. So it's been ordering um Hasbro Pulse and um, some a couple eBay purchases, but it, I haven't been out like looking for stuff. Yeah, when when the whole thing kind of started happening at the beginning of March, like I mean, I went we, I especially you know because family wise, you have to think about like okay, if someone tells me there's like a killer deadly virus outside, I'm not gonna go. Mm, I'm gonna find out for myself. Like yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? I'm gonna go. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna stay home for a bit. We're good. Um, yep. Yeah. But the sheer volume of making up for not going out to stores at least on my end with the package like there was packages coming every single day you know, oh, sometimes you, two yeah, or three the online purchases have like oh yeah taken, oh. yeah 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 we found that in general in life like anything we would run out to target for we've been ordering online but yeah. um i've kept i think it's because i'm getting ready to move i've kind of kept the purchases to a minimum because my new studio won't be ready until probably October. So I know pretty much anything that I buy at this point is not going to be able to be like properly displayed. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of tamped down. Like I've, I had to jump in on the spawn Kickstarter. Oh yeah. N- not yeah. that, not that that's going to be, I'm going to have that in hand anyway, but I've, I've found I've, I've been able to limit purchasing at this moment. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that spawn, um, that thing, I mean, it was a lot of people were like, wow, now you think that's a good idea? And I was like, it, it turned out it was a great idea, like three yeah. million in uh, in funding just like that. I mean, it was like the right moment, right time, right before like things really kind of like escalated. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I was excited for it. I was into that line when it was brand new, when he had first started mm-hmm. Todd Toys at the time. Um I had I collected for years the his the all of those characters and I was excited to see them come back and then the way he did it it was so much fun just watching him like clown around 
every day adding stuff yeah. and i mean that was that was the the entertainment value he provided and I, i'm a huge admirer of him and just it, i always loved his artwork and just the way he revolutionized comics and then basically revolutionized the toy industry and to see yeah. him do something like this again was so much fun and it, I, I was happy to jump in and can't wait to see what what it looks like yeah it, it's funny you say that. like i talked to him in an interview and i told him i go you know you're your videos of the updates for the Kickstarter are like the greatest thing ever yeah. because it's, it's like, we're all at home. We're all bored. And this for the toy community, at least this is like our form of entertainment Absolutely. right now. You know, yeah. and it, <laughs> just, I, I think I mentioned to you, uh, like I, I messaged you after that interview. Like, I think you, you handled yourself so well, cause he's been on this world tour of interviews and so many people get swallowed up by him. Mm -hmm. And I think you did a super job of like holding your own and not just sitting there listening to him. Cause Thank I you, love man. the guy, but he's a, he's a, he's a force of nature. Like oh, I can he see, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to interview him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to, I wouldn't know how to, uh, just how to rein him in and, and get back to the questions. I, I told myself, I'm like, okay, we have COVID-19 going on and Todd McFarlane is calling me right now. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, how if, you screw, if you screw this up, COVID is going to be the least of your worries. So. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. <laughs> so thank you. I, well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, it, he's a great guy. You know, I, the first time, well, I met him years ago, but as like a fan, you know, he was at like Comic-Con. Yeah. And I was like, well, you signed my spawn, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, in talking to him now, he's he's wild. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he's always, his enthusiasm and his, his just like, He's, I don't want to say gambler. He's just a, he's just an entrepreneur. And I, I just love, I take so much um, joy in just listening to the way he just goes all out at problems. And, yeah. you know, he, he also has the benefit of having a hugely successful career behind him. Like he, he, he kind of has a cushion, like he, mm -hmm. he can take chances and not worry about landing on his face. Cause he has so much stuff to back him up, but he, he's, yeah he's so much fun to listen to. He, that was that, like I said, that world tour, like every, every interview I could find with him, even if it was overlapping information was, was so much fun. Yeah. No, just uh, the stories that he tells and the stuff that he incorporates, he has this way of like, you know, uh, most people would, you, you hit a stop and you're like, uh, I'm stuck. I don't know. But yeah. he does yep. this weird thing where he kind of does like an alley oop right around it and gives you like three other different scenarios <laughs> which work. And if two of those fail, at least the one, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's yep. just, he's yep. smart guy. You got to give him credit. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. A lot of people, a lot of people say, you know, let's say with multi, like DC multiverse, have you been kind of collecting that? Um, no, I, I file that under, um, I love to see, like it's exciting to see like the stuff that just came out, the dark nights of metal stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love to see them, but I just, I, I don't, I'm not tethered to the characters and mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I just, again, space wise, I'm just trying to really yeah. tone down, but they, I think they look fantastic. Yeah. That's the thing. And again, talking about like how every company is kind of doing, you know, great stuff, whether you're a fan of this or that, you know, you have something specifically tailored for you. But I think a lot of people, you know, they say, why, well, you know, the main complaint being like, oh, okay, it's why isn't it six inch? Why doesn't it fit with other established toy lines and such and here and there? And it's like, well, if you look at the person that he is, the artist that he is, especially with artists, they're not going to do what's already been done, whether you like right. it or not, you know. But if you do, that's my win -win. opinion too. Like, so, yeah. yeah, let him let him do his own his own take on this. Uh, yeah, they I, I, my, personally, I know people get whacked out about scale i have 12 inch sideshow stuff with six inch figure arts with six inch black series and those aren't even in the same scale i, I like scale variation on the shelf but i know some mm -hmm. people like like to have like very uniform but i i yeah. I, I, I have no issue with him doing his own thing going forward yeah i i agree because you know growing up like you know you said you collected the kenner star wars you know, for the most part, I, I think I started with, you know, Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters and Transformers in the 80s and stuff. And scale was just all over the place. Oh, and yeah. Transformers. The original Transformers was, I mean, <laughs> like, 
uh, a friend of mine bought me the reissue Optimus for the, like the eighties, oh, yeah. the original one. And when you get that out, you're like, Oh my God, this is so small. Like as yeah. a kid in your head, it was huge. And then you start looking at the rest of that line and it was, it was, it's because it was a, a hodgepodge of other lines pulled together. But yeah, the, the scale across that line is terrible. I think that's, for me, that's what makes, like, Siege and Earthwise now for Transformers so appealing is because it's all finally in a scale, and they all yeah. look great. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's taken this long to kind of get to that degree, but that's a huge selling point for me. Um, even though I'm never really a stickler for scale, I think that the Transformers deserve that kind of thing because, like you said, I mean, the original 80s ones are just hodgepodge. <laughs> yeah, and I <laughs> they think... Are. I think the cartoon probably set that bar. Like, it is cool to see the bigger characters with the smaller characters. Yeah. So I think to have the, now especially to have, in the golden age of toys, to have a, uh, a line of, of, um, of Transformers that kind of have some scale rules to them, I think totally makes sense. And, and the fact, this is what blows my mind the most, is in the fact of, they not only they have a robot mode, and then you you turn it into like like a jet. Like I got that star screen for Earthrise. It it turns into what it's supposed to turn into in a super complicated easy way. But to design that, like where do you? I don't even know where you start. I, don't, I still start. don't. I still don't understand how that. Like I can the engineering on the '80s ones. You know now it doesn't seem as complex as it did. But the newer stuff is like unbelievable. How they? Yeah. I don't even know how you start. I don't know where yeah. you start. Sylvie was talking about Unicron, like the big uh, HasLab project, and and they're like, man, it's expensive. I'm like, I know it's expensive, but where do you start with yes. that? Yes. Like, yep. <laughs> that is fast. Was, That's another thing. Fascinating. Like, I I didn't buy one, but it's yeah. Like, I loved following the saga of that and seeing it at uh, New York Comic Con. And actually seeing the prototype, it's that's that's exciting. I, I love seeing stuff like that, and the barge, yes. and oh, the sentinel. Yeah. The sentinel that they teased is so much is so cool to see. It's just the whole industry is is it's fun. Yeah, and they're and they're having fun doing it. And I think you know, Hasbro has their way, like their style of like teasing the fans. And NECA, I love when uh, Randy Fogg goes on Twitter. And answers people, you know, on like almost like a every other daily basis kind of thing. And just the interaction and keeping people up to speed and letting people know, like, yeah, th- this is the we're proud of this stuff. Like, you know, this is uh, th- let's make this fun. And I think that's what's really appealing now and is really pushing people to be more collector oriented. You know what I mean? Before Absolutely. it was kind of like you, you'd have like the hardcore uh, maniacs, which I'll probably I'll put myself in that. Uh, but then you have the more nonchalant, like every, oh, I like that, or you pick and choose kind of thing. But it doesn't matter anymore. It's, you want to get them all? Great. If you don't, there's no problems with that. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, and I think Randy does, uh, like you mentioned him, he does a great job. I've hung out with him a few times, and um, we share a love of heavy metal and toys. And um, we've hung out at a, uh, maybe one or two shows before. But uh, mm-hmm. he, he, uh, he, he's such a great ambassador for that brand like for not i don't want to say one brand but for his company yeah Um, it you you feel like like you're i know he doesn't design the toys but you feel like you're like in the company when you're talking to him like you you get like he 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 reveals just enough to let you to to give a really good view of how that how they work yeah i they're doing some super no no i'm just saying they, they they're doing some really exciting stuff too their their stuff has been phenomenal they, they're, you know, I look at each company in a different, you know, sort of aspect. Like NECA to me, they're kind of like the outcast sort of rock stars. You yeah. Know what I mean, yep. they, they do. Like I had a, a Sergeant D from like Stormtroopers of Death. Yep. And the fact that I have that figure, <laughs> I'm just like, I know, I know. This was a sketch. This was a sketch on a cover, you know, of an I know, album. I know. That's I know. awesome, you know. Um, but the stuff that they're doing with turtles, like I was talking to, um. Trevor Zammett, uh, who's like the the TMNT brand and, and, and designer ambassador, everything else. Yeah, I was listening to that. Um, like when you when you talk about toys and and things that you've collected, and then you see your artwork, much like everyone else who's kind of 
throughout the years, seeing what's already been done and being like, okay, I'm in this industry. I'm going to put my own spin, but give people finally what they want. And I think that all incorporates into like this new age of toys where you have the people our age that are kind of grown up now doing it for themselves. And you just, yep. that's, I mean, with NECA, with their alien, you got back to the future. <laughs> I know. I know. It's like, like it, it really is like our age range, our, our generation is, is in charge of the is is running the asylum now and yeah i think the results are are so much fun are you are you uh, uh do you collect pops or funko are you uh, uh all about those at all no the I, I i again that there's an example of a brand that has been so consistent i just love the uniformity of them this, this yeah. again the formula they have um but i i only have uh, just a handful. I, I've never. I, I love. I love them. I just don't have many. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm the same way. I. I can. I can respect the fact. You know, like you said, uniformity and the fact that they can get these things out and in in keeping with. If you're like a fan of like the movie Hocus Pocus, you know, like totally yeah. off the wall kind of stuff. They make toys, quote unquote, you know, for them. But yeah. it's they're more they're more slightly in my mind. They're more like a gift. Or you know somebody yes, that likes exactly. that particular movie or something like exactly. that. So I have every time I, I, I have I think I have three or four, and they've always been gifts. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, I yep. thought about you. You know, you, you like this. I'm like, thank you. I I love you know seeing the packaging. Like they did like blacklight Target ones over the weekend. Um, they were oh, like was, retro 70s style. God, they look. I was like, God, why? Uh, but they sold out, thank God. So I didn't have to get them. <laughs> was one of them Doctor Strange? Is that what I yeah. saw? Yeah. 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 Doctor Strange, Iron Man. Um, I guess there's like a special Spider-Man one coming out as well. But for me, you know, it's even saying it's a black light. I was like, oh man, it's like Spencer's gifts from the '90s all over. Again. I know, I know. <laughs> it all comes around. Everything, everything comes back in. I was, uh, I was joking one of the designers the other day. I was like, so black light is in. I'm like, are we gonna be getting black light figures? And they're like, no. <laughs> I was like, you think I'm joking? But I wouldn't mind that. That would be a really interesting um, sort of deal. But uh, it doesn't sound it, like the first idea. No, it, it you know, there. It's funny what kind of like the fads that roll in. And I kid you not, like blacklight for whatever reason is is quickly becoming a thing. Dolls, Funkos. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised. You'll you'll see some some figures incorporating that soon enough. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, know who Jim Rugg is. He, him and uh, uh, there's a comic book illustrator. They're both comic book illustrators. Him and um, uh, Ed Piscor, they uh -huh. run a great YouTube channel called uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. So they let people in on the back end of like how comics are made. And they interview, they, they've just been a, built a huge following over the last maybe year and a half. And uh, he's actually working on a, a Kickstarter um uh, blacklight comic book which he's calling the first blacklight comic book so i i it's that's cool it evolves, it's gonna do really well in the next couple of years well hopefully it keeps spencer's uh, gifts in business you know yeah. what i mean like you can get some blacklight artwork <laughs> maybe a fog machine yeah you can get real weird in the toy room in the next couple <laughs> uh couple months <laughs> in terms of so uh, in talking about power rangers our and, and not to go into any specifics or anything like that, what's, are you more of a Mighty Morphin fan if you had to pick one? Or what's what's the iteration, if you have one, that appeals to you? Is there any of them or is it just kind of I, like a... I think the Mighty Morphin are the, the classics, so that appeals to me. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the Beast Morphers, like I know, I don't, I cannot speak to, I don't know how the fandom has received that, the actual show. But I think some of the designs on those have been the most fun to work on, and especially mm -hmm. um, uh, Blaze, the villain, was one of my favorites that I've worked on in the line. So I, I think they, I think that the aesthetic of them is great. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I've heard good and bad. You know, what I mean, me especially talking about it, like not being the Power Ranger guy. Like I love Mighty Morphin first two seasons. That's about it. Right. Um, Beast Morphers, I think, has hit with fans, other people that maybe not be so involved with Power Rangers, like me. You know, it, it could be like, it looks cool. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's not, it's, it's not my thing. But I could appreciate, like, 
some well-designed lightning collection figures. You know, I mean, I've seen them. I saw the Blaze one that you're talking about. It looks good. So yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I would. I think. I think in terms of the line, I think a lot of people are waiting for Zords. I think they're waiting for uh, space. I'm waiting for space aliens. You know, the the old designs, the creature yeah. kaiju kind of things. Yeah. Are so yeah, so much fun. So awesome, and I could see you just killing it with the monsters and everything else. You know what I mean? It's, it's um, it's been fun. Like I said, like with uh, Goldar and Zed and Rita, it's been fun taking the aesthetic that that we developed for the for the um, helmeted costumed characters and applying it. So yeah, it's it's adaptable. I'm 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 excited with with how it's gone so far. Are you? We talked a little bit before the, we started talking, but uh, you know, in terms of Japanese culture and monsters and everything else, you said you're a big Godzilla fan. Yeah. Are you, are you excited to see what uh, you know? Let's say SH Monster Arts and NECA and all that. Are you a big fan of those? Yeah, definitely. I um, I have like a mix of a collection for Godzilla stuff. That that's that might predate my love or maybe coincide with my love for star wars because that as a kid i was um my my i didn't have cable at the time where we lived so my aunt would record the old godzilla films on vhs huh. she, was, she was like the only one in the family with a vhs so whenever i would go over to uh, my grandmother's house i could i could watch all those old godzilla movies so that's awesome uh, i have a decent. I have a few. If you're familiar with X Plus um, figures, um, I believe so. Okay, yeah. they're, they're like um, they come in two different scales. They're uh, 25 centimeter or 30 centimeter, and okay. they're like super. They're vinyl. They're very little articulation, um, and they're usually Im- you have to import them typically. So they're they're not cheap. Um, I have a few of those. And then the, the 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 allure of them is that they're they're sculpted to the suits from the films, mm. so like you can see like seams and rips and like it it is like the utmost in sculpting. Um, and then I have a lot of you know like the next scale down like the the monster arts and a few NECAs and like like I said I like a variety of. Um, uh, of scale so i, I like yeah. the scales together i'm i just looked it up actually um i am familiar i didn't i guess i couldn't didn't place the name but yes i know exactly what you're talking about now after seeing it with the x plus yeah um i i love there's something special about monsters especially i guess we'll say power rangers or even like an off end line like leonard is doing uh, like the old aliens but they're doing it differently than than neca they got like yeah, a more colorful very- kenner yeah, yeah. Uh, th- there's something to me. Uh, you give me a good monster in whatever you know action figure form, whatever brand, I, I usually go for it because there's there's so much fun. <laughs> I agree, and even the uh, like I said in the McFarlane that new wave, the Doomsday. Yeah. Cool. So cool. Yeah, that uh, I was talking with you know one of the designers, and they the original plan was you know like big. He's supposed to be a big, huge monster guy. But um, it's still – I love that they're kind of doing, like, the old Spawn fitting a huge friggin' figure, like, <laughs> into a tiny little clamshell box, yeah. you know what I mean, kind of thing. So. That always appealed to me when, when he was doing it back then. Like, just yeah. – you'd pick it up, and, some, like, the glue wouldn't even hold the, the blister on the card. At some yeah. <laughs> it was so heavy. You know, that it, – it, it's funny. Um, in – and before before talking with uh, Todd McFarlane, and then we talked about the Malbolgia packaging during the interview, and he was like, "Yeah, we had to put the the extra little bolt like through the plastic, you know, through the packaging because the Malbolgia was literally tearing itself off, you know, yeah. from the thing." And every once in a while, I do see figures still to this day like they're they're just incredibly just falling. The plastic is just falling off the packaging, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's a heavy." figure but that's it's that's just part of the appeal it's uh, it's great when you get that you know so that was a fun time. <laughs> yeah that the, the when you when you got that guy and you stood him up and it's <laughs> a friend of mine since i never i never got him in the store a friend of mine was telling me like years and years ago they had to get up way way early so old-fashioned style and 
that was the figure everybody was after for months. You know, I mean, one per case, something like that. And then they released it uh, in other ways later down the road. But um, yeah, Mal Bolgia was quite the figure to have. And even to this day, I mean, he fits with the new Spawn Mortal Kombat figure. He fits, you know, all that stuff still goes together. So yeah. And then, then when he started expanding into the different, like he, he started doing the wet work. And yeah. I was I was even still in through then. You, you had a really great work. Yeah. It's 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 great the the creativity that he shows um, in in the design of his figures. Like he's not afraid to just yeah, said, go with wet works or he did Christmas like that old weird style that he did or you yeah know, it's yeah. yep those little dioramas. Yeah. <laughs> McFarland monsters. That's another one people want to. Uh, come back but yeah. you know dragons yeah. all that kind of stuff we've seen a lot more kickstarter um projects now from him yeah that i would not i would not mind i'll 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 be in a however i can get my spawn figures and like you said you know bringing stuff back that hasn't been seen for quite some time man that is yeah. so much fun well i know i know we said well let's try for an hour and i i don't mean to take up any more of your time i so appreciate you being here um any last final words? Anything else that you think we should we should cover? I I love I could talk to you all day. I know you got I know you got places to be, but uh, no, this has been a great just a great conversation. I so appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, I'd be uh, I'm I'm happy to happy to jump in here and and talk about again something that's it's surreal to me that I get to play in the sandbox that I've always wanted to play in, and um, I, I'm as much a collector as I am a and an artist so it's 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 really fun to be on this side on both sides actually so and that that's who i always want making my toys i'll tell you that <laughs> right. well, I'm, I'm i'm here to oblige thank you yeah of course uh tell people uh where can they find you like instagram facebook any of that stuff yeah you know, i always call you strong stuff i'm i'm like yeah t- i'm gonna talk to you know tom whalen today and in my mind i'm going like yeah strong stuff <laughs> i know it's funny i, I always that, that whole, I'll just give a real quick aside that the, the like handle came up like probably 20 years ago. I was working at a design firm and I had been there for maybe a year or two and they hired a uh, designer to come in, a new designer and um, it wound up eventually becoming my wife. Um, but she oh, awesome. <laughs> really great little, um, little icon for herself. And uh, it was like a little tornado. And she, she said like a natural brainstorm. And I was like, oh, I, I need like a logo or an icon for myself. And that's where that little strongman came from. And when social media took off, um, it, it's, it just became, it just kind of morphed. And now like people don't necessarily always tie my name with strong stuff. Mm-hmm. But it, I always, I always wonder if that's, you know, helpful to me or it, it, it I'm fine with it, however it is, but it's funny, like, People sometimes see us as two different entities when it's the same thing, but I think for me, you know, in in, in working in marketing and and seeing brand recognition, a lot of times it throws me off when you see somebody use like a logo or something for so long. Like uh, let's say DC Collectibles is now back to being DC Direct. I je- I told the the people at Toy Fair, I'm like, I just got used to saying DC Collectibles, and now you're going back to DC Direct. I'm like, what are you doing to me? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I know. I know, but it, I do associate you with, you know, the strong guy logo. And I always go like, yeah, I'm like powering you guys strong, you know, strong, you know, strong stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm good. I'm glad it's working on that level. I, I even, I even updated that logo maybe six or seven years ago, but I kept the same colors. I was like very wary of like damaging any kind of recognition that I had built up to that point, but it, yeah. it, it works out. So I'm not, I shouldn't sweat it too much. I know every so, once in a while I'll I'll change the colors for you know the Toy Shiz logo. I mean, being yeah. that it's it's just a reworking of the Toy Biz logo, of course. Right, right. Which a lot of people they go, I just noticed that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just making it easy on you. But um, you know, people go, oh, you changed you changed the logo. I'm like, no, no, no. It's just like what I think the last time it was like uh, for Halloween or Pride Month. You know what I mean? You, you change it in corresponding to like yeah, things that right. are going on in the world. So right. Yeah. Well, anyway, back to the original question. Uh, my website is uh, strongstuff.net. My um, 
Shop is Strong Stuff Shop .net. And on Instagram, I'm Strong Stuff Tom because I wasn't quick enough to get Strong Stuff. <laughs> and, um, and on Instagram, I'm just Strong Stuff. Excellent. Yeah. I'll put uh, I'll put links uh, for everybody down below. Make it real easy. You can find Mr. Tom Whalen perfectly. Thank you again, sir, for coming on. This has been an absolute blast. I've had such a good time talking toys with you. <laughs> uh, likewise. Thanks for having me. Of course. We'll do it again. We'll get some more power. Yeah. Maybe when that Rita set comes out, we'll uh, we'll have more things to, to talk about. But yes, um, check in a couple months when you can see everything else that's come out. Yeah, we'll talk about the new house. Uh, I wish you the best with that as well. Thank you. And uh, hopefully there's uh, no more catastrophic <laughs> whatevers for uh, 2020. <laughs> yeah. I hope we're done. Well, cool. All right. I thank you again. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.